Hello and welcome to this month's script case video. My name is Jamie Oates and I am your host today. In this month's video, we will be developing an expense management system. Now within this expense management system, you will be able to add your expenses. So whether that is in incoming, for employment, other, and then you can also specify whether that is for your nine to five job, for a weekend job, for any extra work that you may have. And you can really, you know, dig deep into uh, savings and so forth later on. Okay, you have then also your outgoings for your bills and then exactly what bills. So electric, water, gas, taxes or more. And then of course you may have your car and bike yeah, and there you'll spend fuel or repairs. And for your house, well, your mortgage and repairs again. You have then also to indicate whether this expense was today and if so, it will then automatically provide today's date and then you will not need to include that. Otherwise, of course, you can specify the date manually. So once you've indicated what exactly your expenses are, you just click next. You can then add a subject for that. Say it's for your wages or for a payment or whatever it's for. I even included a description field with the new HTML editor. You specify then also an amount and then you just simply add that. Once that's then been added into the database, you'll be then able to view all of your incomings. You'll be able to organize that via the uh, login if you add security, because there's no security added to this, but I've included the field there for you, and it's all ready for you to add your own security if that's what you want to do. Otherwise, of course, you can organize via subtype, via the minor type, and then, of course, dig into where all of your money uh, your savings, your incomings and outgoings are going each month. Now we have then also the same layout for the ex outgoings. Okay, so here we have the same. We have then that then also for the savings. And then we also have a nice chart so that we can actually see, you know, each month how much money we have incoming and outgoing, and then also dig into exactly where that is going to. And now, of course, the chart is then, of course, fully customizable because we have then all of the dynamic options here. So we can then, of course, change the chart view depending on what exactly we want to see. Now, within the back end or the administrative side of it, we have a basic manage option here for the subtypes. So you can add further subtypes. You also have then the types form where you can have types and indicate the color of the text, which is then displayed. We have then also the minor types. And we have also a complete expense list. Okay, so for within the complete list, you would then be able to dig into the details of each uh, expense logged, as well as view further options for the group buy and so forth. Okay, so that is pretty much the back end as well as the front end of this mini little expense management system. But as you see, I've you know added some basic customizations such as, such as some nice icons so that it looks nice as well as some basic images so again it's for an expense management system or for you at home to use as your little piggy bank so that you can keep track of you know where your money is coming and where it is going and in today's day and time maybe that is uh, one of the platforms that is wanted now one of the options that you may notice here is that I have also included the option to change the theme around because I, I tend to like the black as well as some of the other themes that are available so I have included also multiple themes and that is then also then available within the top menu here and that can then also be customized okay so we will dive into script case and have a quick look at this and then have a look at how we can actually develop this Okay, so before we jump into Scriptcase, the one of the most important aspects of your project within Scriptcase is, of course, your database. Remember that your applications are created from your database tables. So if your database is nicely organized and structured very well, then you will have a much easier time developing your applications. As you see here, we have a very basic table here for expenses. We have a type, a subtype, and also a minor type, okay? So that is all then tracked within the single table expenses, and that then indicates then the subject, date, description, amount. And there is also an extra field here, expense, 
which I was initially going to add some extra tra tracking capabilities or some other features and I decided against it so that is then also available there for you to use for your own purpose. Okay, so as you see here, I also have there the login field, as in, so the login is available here, and that is then there, and that will then also accept then the login field if you generate your security within Scriptcase, or of course, design and develop your own security. Okay, so that's the database, and as you can see here for the type, we have a basic type field, the color, we have for expense type, we have also the subtype as, as well as also a color option. And then for the minor type, we have simply the to well the type as well as the subtype indicated and stored as well as then the minor type so they are all related and you see the relationships between them here within the graph and that should then give you some indication of what's going on as well as seeing all of the available fields Okay, so that is the database that we will be working with today, and that will of course be available within the download file, so within the uh, zip file that you download, you will have the database there also, with all of the data that I have also inserted there for you to sample. Okay, so let's jump into Scriptcase and see how we actually created this. Okay, so I'm now inside of Scriptcase, and from here you see I have some projects available already and I have here the expenses platform which I had just shown you as you can see it just has 11 applications okay and we are basically then going to start off by creating a new project and I will create a blank project and I can't call it or give it the same name again so I'll call it expense management this time I will add an icon so let me see if I can find an icon here somewhere for money I believe this is where I found the original icon. So let me do a quick search there. And then here we have some available money icons. So I'm just gonna select one of these available that are within script case already. And it doesn't look great here, but it doesn't matter. That is only for the profile. And then from here, I can add my description as well as some additional project information. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and click the next button. And then with that, I can select the database that I want to work with. Now we generally work with MySQL here. Of course, Scriptcase supports further databases such as SQLite, uh, Microsoft Azure, Google Cloud. So for your platform, you may want to then select the database that you want to use. In my case, I will choose MySQL. And for the connection details, they are very similar to each of the options, of course, dependent on the requirements for each of those databases. So from here, I do not have a password for this database. So I'm just going to select uh, the list database button and it will automatically connect for me. Okay, so here I have then my database DB expenses. So I will choose that and then click the test connection button just to verify that the connection is successful and that the database can be accessed. Now we do have further options here for the security, for the filtering of the tables, as well as further advanced options for a persistent connection, for example, or to choose not to use the schema before the table. Okay, so those are advanced options. Again, I will not be applying those today and I will just go ahead and click the next button. Okay, so the first option we have once we've started creating our project is the option to choose our languages. So from here, I can add further languages if I wanted to. So if I just click the button here, add more languages, I will be presented with the option to choose an additional language that I can add, as well as the option to indicate alternative regional settings. And then I can just simply add that by clicking the add button. In this case, I'm just going to leave the English language and as you had seen within the demonstration i had included multiple themes and now we have our theme selection so i will now choose to include further themes within this uh, project okay so just like that i can also then choose to select an alternative default template which would then be applied to all of my applications so i'm going to leave it with the sc9 blueberry and then just click the create button. 
Okay, so my project is pretty much ready now, and I can already go ahead and start creating my applications. Now, if there's any problems with the database or the link to the database, then that you will be notified about that in the meantime. In that case, it will tell you there are no tables within the database or that there is a problem with the connection or anything else. As the connection is successful and everything is good, I am presented with the new application option. So from here, I can just go ahead and start creating all of the applications I need for this project. Okay, so I'm not going to start with that. I'm actually going to start up here, application, and then the batch applications, okay? So by starting the batch applications, is giving me now the option to create multiple applications in one go. So instead of going through the previous option, like here, the new application, creating individual applications for all of my tables. And as you see, there are not that many tables really, but I do have some views here, which I hadn't shown you, but that you will see as we continue on. Okay, so as I had previously stated, you have then the option to either generate and create your application individually, or you can create batch applications and create all of them in a really quick time. So that's exactly what we're going to do now. So I'm going to select all of these just by choosing down here the checkbox. And with that, I have all of the views here selected. So I have an expenses in view, an expenses out view, and an expenses savings view. Now I will show you how I have actually gone ahead and created each of those views, because as you see within the original tables, so let me bring that back up again within these original tables, I have no views defined here. And if you have a, a good eye, you'll probably notice that I have here the DB restaurant. So that is a mistake that should not be there. And that is also because of this table here, the minor type. So when you receive the uh, database, that is of course corrected and you will not have those issues, but you will also have the views that I have already defined here. For instance, the in, out and savings. And as I'd mentioned already, I will also go ahead and show you how I have very quickly uh, created and generated those. Okay, so we're starting off here with our expenses. We have a form and a grid. So I will go ahead and generate those. However, later on, I will remove the link between the form and the grid. Okay, so by selecting the two of them now, it will actually, so if I deselect all of these, so it's a little clearer, and I choose here just expenses. By having both the grid and the form selected, it will automatically generate the link between the two applications for me, okay? Now I don't want that, but it is very easy to remove it, so it's not a big deal. So I'm gonna go ahead and just choose the two of them anyway, because I do want a form, and I do also want an expenses grid. Okay, so for the minor type and subtype, I do not want a grid from either of these, as well as the type, we do not want a grid, we only want forms, and for the expenses in, out, and savings, well, they are only views, database table views, so they will only be presented with the uh, grid option that we have now. So I'm going to go ahead and click the next button, and we have then further options where we can now define the description as well as change the title or the name of each of these applications. And we can also define the type of applications that we want to have generated. So for instance here, the minor type, subtype and type, well, we don't really want single rows for these. So for the type, I will go ahead, editable grid, editable grid, and the minor type, let's go ahead with the multiple rows. Okay, so then we have our grids down here. Everything's pretty much ready. And I'm just gonna add some descriptions in here. So, so view of savings. And then I can just copy paste that. View of money out and view of money in. Okay, so just like that, I have now added some descriptions to these grid applications, and I could continue now for the form as well as the grid expenses, as well as then also for the type forms that we have available. Now, by adding the description here now and previous to the generation or creation of the security, when it comes to generating the group security, these description fields will also then be included within the database um, that is then generated by script case. So that is very good to know and definitely uh, something that you should definitely keep in mind. Okay, and at the same time, 
by adding a description, it, it becomes quite clear what the application is for. Okay, so I'm pretty much ready now. I have my application selected. I have the types of forms chosen, and now I have the option to generate the source code and also bring them all to edit. So I will just go ahead and click the Finish button and have it generate the applications, but not actually generate the files yet, okay? So right now, it's just generated the applications within Scriptcase, nothing exists yet, and I can actually just go ahead now and start configuring and making changes to each of these applications. Okay, so I want to start off here with the form expenses, as it is, first of all, the most difficult form that we have out of all of them, and I can say that it is not really so difficult as you will see as we continue on. Once that's generated, and I have now here my form, and we can see that this is a very basic form. We have all the fields, nothing special here. I don't have the nice layout that I had there previously, and you know, it's, it's well, it's, it's, it's a functional form. So let's jump into our form then, and let's make some very basic changes. So the first thing I want to do is come here to settings, okay? And I want to change the uh, vertical alignment here to top, okay? And if I run that now, you'll see that will then, you know, nudge the form here to the top of the application, which is quite nice. So that'll bring it back up to the menu that we had earlier. And then we can also come here to the layout and make some changes here to our layout. So I have here, first of all, the settings. Now I could go ahead and change the header, the template, the buttons, or the theme here, and specify a completely different form, uh, theme, sorry, a completely different theme for this form if I wanted to. Now this is also good to know because in the case of where you have this blue, this may be good for the back end, but you may not want that for the front end. In those cases, you may want to create a new theme, and in that case, you can then individually um, define that if that is something you wanted to do. Okay, so I actually want to come here to the layout pages and the first thing I want to do is change here the new option from tabs to steps, okay, and that will then give me the option to create here a, a second page, which I actually had just a moment ago, but it created tabs, so that is important to note. And I, I'm just going to go pack two and um, I do want to create a new block as well. Now that is important to note by having this checked, you will also create a new block and blocks are typically generated here. So let me zoom in there a little bit so that is a little better. So blocks are generally created here and we are now just creating um, an extra block with this page or with this step in this case. So if I click on include, and I'll say OK because I want to save those changes and then I will have now the extra step there. So here I will then go ahead with um, so expense. OK, and then we add then details and then we can add, add also a description as well as um, include a font or some icon there if we wanted to. So I, I'm not wanting to do that. So I'm just going to go uh, save. And if I run that now, you know, nothing's really much changed here in the form other than here we have this box here. The rest of it looks the same. It's because we still need to organize our content. So that's what we're going to do next. We're come, going to come here to block first of all, and I do not want to display the, um, well, I actually want to add an extra block in here first of all. So let's do that first. So then I'll call that block two and create that. And I was just going to nudge that up here to the second, well, the first indicator or first area that we have, first page, right? And here I'm going to change the label position to above, above, here also above. And here I actually want to um, below, below. And we can actually change this to however we like later on, but we can check that out in a, in a few moments. For now, I'm going to save that. And I do want to change here the columns. So I want three columns here at the top and two at the bottom. Uh, the, here we want one. So let's save that again. And then I can scroll up here and come here to the edit fields. Now within the edit fields, I can check out all of the fields that I have available within my form. Now I haven't moved any yet, but I have added this block as well as this extra page that is indicated, which is in fact our extra option here that will be presented as well as then a new block. Now every page requires a block as minimum. Okay, so that is very important. You cannot move this block and then think, okay, I will just remove that. It is a requirement to have at least one block there. 
Okay, so here then I can go ahead and make some adjustments. Now, I do not want the expense displayed. I do not want ID expenses displayed, the login, as well as the date added. Now for the date added, this field, I want to adjust this so that it automatically adds the date time every time the form is inserted. Okay, and then we have here our subject, description, and amount. So I'm going to drag those down here to the details, like so. And then we can actually go ahead and run that. And we can just see what it looks like now. So we might may want to make some changes. And we see there already we want those other fields here. And here on details, well, we don't want all of these fields there either. Okay, so that is very important. So we want to adjust those. And we also need to change here the uh, field here that we have for our uh, description, which is here. And that will, of course, want to have. So we want the date over here. I also want to add an extra field in there. So let's do that now. So that is then also completed. So like quantity one field next. Now that was a checkbox that we had there. So let's have a checkbox. I do not require a new block. And here we will say then uh, today. I'll just call this today. Okay, and go create. And then for this field, uh, we want to add the question. Um, was this, if I can spell correctly today, was this expense today? Just like so, I can save that and then come back here to edit fields. And here I actually want to go ahead and move that field around. So that wants to come before the expense date. We have the checkbox and I still need to modify or adjust my checkbox, which somebody probably noticed for sure. I had an error message there pop up just a few moments ago. And that is because I did not complete here the requirement for checkbox. So I haven't indicated what that checkbox holds yet. So I will come back to that. Okay, so then we have our subject, description and currency. So the description is not an image that I want to change here to the HTML editor. And the reason why it comes up as an image is because it is a blob field. And just by applying that now, I have a HTML editor displayed there. We have then the subject. So we can quickly make adjustments here to the titles. So we have the amount, we have the description. So there I use the language key. There we have the date. And here we have the field. And let's adjust these labels here also for the types okay and like so and if i go ahead and run that form again we will now see a slight different layout that we have available now we still need to adjust these type fields that we have here and also our checkbox that we have here so coming here to the details option we have our subject our description and our amount Okay, so let's jump back to the form then, and then we can actually go ahead and make these changes to these fields. So for our expense type, we have a select field already, and if I scroll down, our selection is already presented, but it doesn't really work. So if we just come here to the expenses, and then we can actually make those selections ourselves within the database, and make sure the correct fields are chosen, and then always choose the connection, and indicate your connection. Now, if you want to have a title, you can do so. Now, I don't really want to have a select on this form. Um, so I'm going to change that to a radio, and that will maintain here my select statement. And uh, I don't want a title, but I do want to add some columns. So I will add five columns here. And if I go ahead and run that now, I will now have a radio option with five columns. So I have two further options here and I have some nice radio buttons. Now we do want to enable here the use switch option and just with that, it will make these radio buttons look a little nicer. And of course we could customize that within the styling and so forth if we wanted to. Okay, so we need to apply that and also here for the subtype. So again, I'll choose here the radio straight away instead of uh, coming down here for the select first. And then for the select, I'll choose the subtype table choose the subtype field, again, choose the connection, and again, indicate five columns. So I can then go directly to the minor type and apply basically the same thing again. So a radio field, scroll down, choose the create select, and we have now the minor type, 
and the minor type field, choose the connection. And again, I will add five columns in there. Okay, so if I go ahead and run that now, we will now have each of these fields pretty complete. And that's really not what we want. We want these to be really um, only displayed for the values that are required. So what we need to do then is come here to, first of all, our subtype field. And here we have our select. So I can just come in here and press enter. And then I can add uh, an extra query where, for instance, and we have here, if we open up the create select, we can actually check the field tables really quickly. So we have for the subtype, we have ID expenses underscore type. Okay, so I need that field where ID expenses underscore type equals. And then we want to indicate here our ID expenses type field. Okay, and we do that by providing some curly brackets and their ID type, just like so. And if I save that, and then come back here to the ID expenses type. And then here I can enable the use Ajax option and choose then the minor or the subtype as an option. And if I go ahead and click run now, within my form, I choose out and we see now the subtype update according to my selection. And do notice we also want to enable the extra feature here for the use switch for the subtype So enable that. We can save that and then we can also come here to the minor type use switches there also and then here we also want to make the adjustment again so let's check the create select again we have the expenses underscore minor type now i believe this one was quite long so expenses underscore type underscore id expenses underscore type okay so let's come here to our subtype and we can actually just go ahead and copy this our where statement, come here to our minor type, place that in here, and just to confirm again, because I really have a short memory, uh, expenses underscore type underscore, so expenses underscore type, underscore type, underscore ID expenses type equals ID expenses type. Now, do we really want to select this field or we want to choose the subtype? I think we want to choose the subtype field. So let's choose here the subtype and double check that subtype. So that's what I need to type in here, subtype, subtype. Okay, just like so. I can then go ahead and run that. Okay, it's not gonna actually load correctly now. We are getting the correct types though, which is nice, but we actually want to go ahead and have this loaded automatically here with the type field. So again, with the type, in fact, with the subtype field, because this field loads on this field and this field loads on this field. So that's important to note. And then we can come here on the subtype and again, use Ajax and this time choose the minor type, switch it on, run the form again. Now, if I go ahead and choose add new this time, we have that in employment and then nine to five extra out car, bike, fuel repairs. Lovely. So that is fully functional already and that works nicely. And again, for the minor type, just make sure that you have the use switch enabled and that one is good. So the next field we have is our today field. So here we had our checkbox and we see here our label is not applied. So we need to apply a label and was this expense today. We have that saved already, so I can choose that and that will be inserted. And I can scroll down here and for the lookup method, well, we are manually adding this and because it is a single value, you need to choose here the lookup type and change from multiple values to a single value. Okay, yes, it's telling me up here again, I need to complete the data, which is add something in here. And here I want to have a yes and a Y and a negative value would then be a no. And we can then insert that and then that will be stored here. Make sure to click save and that will then be available. So if I now go ahead and click run, our checkbox field will now also be displayed. And also here with the checkbox, we can also enable here the use switch option, run it again, and we have here now a nice switch for our form. 
Okay, so we have a few features here to add still. Yeah, we want to have a new form so that we want to hide this field so that uh, so that the date is also added when we click this. And then we want to also make sure these fields are also mandatory so that we can't go next. And this is why the form here is already struggling. So if I come back here to the form, and what I'm going to do is then come here to the edit fields. And here we have the required options. So I'm just check this box here and make sure that they are included. In fact, we'll leave the date field, but the first three are required as well as here, the subject and amount, sorry, subject and amount. We want those also. And then we can run the form again. And now those fields are mandatory fields. And we can also make further changes for our page options. So here for the steps, so when we come back here to the pages option where we configured the steps option, we have further options here at the bottom where we can hide the next and back buttons. We can change the theme. We can also change the, uh, the width of the uh, fields and so forth and change here the steps, uh, the template of the steps. So I'm going to choose here the lined option because that looks quite nice. And we also want to make sure that we have here the mandatory steps provided. And we're scrolling down, we have then further options so we can customize the fonts and so forth. Now I'm not going to go ahead and do that. I'll leave them as default. And then of course you can go ahead and make those adjustments in your own time. Okay, so then we have our form pretty much ready. We have our fields ready and we have our amount and everything. We still need to change here our expense amount. So let's go ahead and make some changes here because it is a currency field and we want to make sure that we have a currency symbol available as well as the option with a calculator. You never know, it could be good to have a calculator to work out on those forms. So let's include that also and then I will go ahead and save that. Okay, so within our form, we have then the HTML editor, we have our subject. Now, one thing I still need to add here is then on events. And what we want to do is actually force this form, because we run this form again, it starts automatically in edit mode. And we want to change this form so that it starts empty or blank or new even. So with that, I'm going to use here the macro. And if you come into the Scriptcase website, uh, the documentation, you have here the macros option, and then you have here all of the macros available. And there I'm using the sc underscore apl underscore conf. And this then allows me to start this form new. Now I do need to change here the name of this form. So there I will then add the form underscore expenses and indicate that this should start new. So if I go ahead and run that again now, the form will start nice and fresh without any details whatsoever. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is on the checkbox, we want to add this, you know, this feature so that I click this, it will hide this field and also present me the date. So for that, I need to come here to the left-hand menu and choose here Ajax events and choose new Ajax event and then choose the field today, there we go. And then we have an on click event and then just simply create that event. Okay, so now here we have then the option because it is obviously a checkbox, so it could be checked, it could be unchecked. And for that, we can basically then just add a little script. So here I'm just saying that if the expense amount, so if today, let me change here because obviously the fields were slightly different and expense if today equals yes, then expense dates equals today's date and time, and then the expense date field is off. Okay, so that will basically fill in the field with today's date and then also switch the field off, but only if the today field, which is our checkbox here, indicates yes. So if I go ahead and run that, and then we can go ahead and check here our box, and that then hides and fills in our date. So we can go ahead and test it. And so let's say we have some outgoings. Let's say it's for the house, some repairs. I'll go next, um, fix the roof. Uh, had to buy some tiles and pay some guy. Okay, and say that costs say 800 bucks.
okay and then we can just go ahead from there and just click the add button and that will then add our new record now there are some options here that i'm not too keen on and that would really be here the menu so for that what we can do is come back into our application again choose here the toolbar and then we can actually make adjustments here to the positioning of our options so for this form if we look at this we have here a cancel button we have a next button and a refresh we don't really need those so we can actually get rid of here the cancel update delete reload as well as the exit button we don't need the search either the insert well we actually want the insert at the bottom here as well as then move the next wizard to the right so i will add here the previous wizard and add that in there remove the jump to and remove here also the navigation as well as the rows counter so then we have our previous next now i still need to in, add the insert button so i'll add that there and then we can go ahead and run that again and then we have our next button at the bottom here which makes more sense and of course i need to fill in the forms so it's going to generate an error again so just really quickly reload it in employment extra today next and uh, for extra work uh, have some description and uh, say 50 bucks add that and we have two add buttons now so let's make sure we, we remove the one from the top because we don't want that and then we click add and there is then our form ready okay so that's pretty much it for part one so let's have a quick look at what we've actually done here so far and then when we come back in part two we will continue with the rest of the applications and uh, add some favorite icons well add some icons and so on so it looks more like an expense system and of course you can then customize it further with your own modifications adjustments your own security and anything else that you want to add to it but for now we still have some further forms to complete so up till now we have completed this form which is then our expenses form so we may want to change here the title so let me quickly go ahead and do that because really we don't want to have a default title there do we uh, add your expenses and there is no update so we could remove that if we wanted to and there at least we have a reasonable title there okay so with the title there we have our add your expenses form where we have a two-step form where we select our type which then loads the subsequent fields or uh, options that are available for those types we have the option to choose that the uh, expense was today and with the automatic date insertion we can click next we have our subject field our description field as well as an amount now there we should possibly actually make the date field mandatory so that that is also required because it is required for the charts later on so let's actually go ahead and do that so if i come back here to edit fields and there i have my expense date so let's choose that as ex as required and that would then really be the final thing to do so other than that other than this form we have so far generated our basic applications so we haven't actually done anything further with these other forms that we have available here yet or the grid applications we still have to create a menu as well as a basic dashboard which you know is going to uh, display a basic bit of text as well as an image but of course it gives a more of a feeling that the platform is complete okay so i hope to see you back in part two where we will then complete continue with the relevant applications that we have left as well as then the styling and final development of so thank you very much for watching this script case video i hope to see you within the next one